What's up, y'all? Crypto for again, coming back. Um, all right, so this video is a little different. This video is going to be more about, uh, probably less about crypto. I don't know. I tend to give the gab, so I just talk and talk. So it's not really scripted, so who knows. But what my intent of this video is, is to cover the unforeseen events, the what are known as black swans, okay? And a black swan can be, uh, or, or, or also known as a unicorn event, right? Unicorn events are usually when it's a bull market, the unicorn takes off. It's something that was obscure, you didn't know, uh, you didn't expect it. It's a fantasy creature that you heard of before and all of a sudden you see it flying. That's the unicorn event. And usually it refers to investments like stocks, okay? You'll find a unicorn company. Uh, black swan is typically uh, what Nassim Talib, uh, uh, described as an unforeseen event that causes markets to crash okay so it's the opposite direction and we've seen some of those black swan events and uh, unicorn events in cryptocurrencies but you're also starting to see a lot more of it in the stock market many of these assets have become over uh, valued in other words they're they're over oversaturated um, there are too many people speculating that the prices are gonna rise or or trying to FOMO in, fear of missing out, that they're 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 not gonna miss out on a good investment. So they, they just pile in and then a lot of them don't do any research on what they're investing in. A lot of them don't know what they're investing in even after they invest in it. They just put their money in there because everybody else is doing it. So because everybody else is doing it, sorry it's hot. I even have the air conditioner on and it's still I'm still sweaty. Uh, <laughs> because everyone else is doing it, because everyone else is doing it that that's the way that they should do it all right i mean you want to follow the crowd i mean that's the the perfect example of what a sheep is it just follows the flock without thinking it mindlessly follows the flock and even if that means uh, experts are telling you what needs to be done if you don't go and verify that those experts are truly experts and that they know what they're talking about they may lead you off a cliff okay so recently we saw that in the crypto markets a lot of people fomoing into like dogecoin because oh just because elon musk is going to be on saturday night live and he's going to pump bitcoin because oh he's invested in bitcoin and oh and uh you know all these other projects are going to just fly because all these famous people are in it and yeah famous people do contribute to uh you know name recognition and branding um elon musk and uh and mark cuban uh, happen to be billionaires who are very well known and they also could potentially be contributing to use cases because they're creating use uses or functions for the tokens now <clears throat> I'm gonna refer to this in another video because I have a I have a uh, a, a pandemic video I want to do that's talking about functions gain of function right okay so it's similar similar concept but I want to talk about it here because uh, YouTube will just scrap this video and I've already been deplatformed from a lot of places. I've been banned from Facebook recently for another month. This is the fifth consecutive month that I've been banned. So I might as well not even go on Facebook anymore. But just because I'm a rebel and I'm angry at people who always tell me what I can do or what I should do, and it's none of their freaking business what to tell me what to do, I'm going to go back on Facebook until they just completely cut off my account. Anyway, let's get back to calm and get back to a, a better, uh, a better uh, message here. All right, so... The unforeseen, all right? Everybody talks about technical analysis. Technical analysis is great. It watches the price movements of an asset. In a lot of different markets, different asset classes, you have charting or or price pattern recognition or price pattern uh, uh, plotting so that you can kind of see where a price is going. Where is it trending? Is it going up? Is it going down? Um, what are some of the players doing, like the small fries? Uh, and, you know, in the short term, it gives you kind of a general idea of what's going on. And then in the longer term, it gives you a general idea of what's going on. Longer term tends to be a little bit more accurate because uh, you can't really manipulate long term things, long term events uh, as easily as you can short term ones. So when you look back on long term charts, it gives you a better idea of what the direction of, of an asset is moving. Short-term charts are great for short-term swing trading or, or, or trades or, or quick in-and-out movements. So I want to enter a market, I want to exit it. 
but they don't really tell you what the overall event is going to do. And this also brings up the, the, the type of investing you're doing. Are you the type who buys and holds or are you the type who uh, is a trader, okay? If you're trading and you have the, the mentality of an investor, you're going to get wiped out because vol traders like volatility. They like price changes because you can basically make money no matter what the direction is. If you're a trader, you have to really understand a market or you're gonna lose money, guaranteed, because uh, actually markets are very manipulated, especially in the trading realm because you're dealing with leverage. And so it's easy for market makers to make money and steal your money because they know your leverage, they know your position, they know your entry prices, they know what the market is doing, and they know how to move the market so that you can get wiped out and they can take your money and they can pocket that as part of their salary and they can actually reward some of the uh, market movers for participating in that market by taking your money so um, it's a wealth transfer mechanism okay and hopefully when you trade you want to be on the winning side this is why in my last video I talked about how I've been shorting Bitcoin and I've been shorting a lot of the main uh, main cryptos, even though I'm bullish on them, because I want to make money. I'm not in it to freaking have a philosophy that only I'm right on this, and if I'm not right, then the market is wrong. No, the market is always right, and if you want to make money, you have to get out of this tribe mentality and this this arrogant attitude of what I'm doing is the correct thing. Uh, and you have, you have to get out of your biases, okay? Everybody talks about racism and how they hate it, but in reality, everybody is biased towards something and against other things, right? And that's what loses them money. Reality of it is, you don't need the government, you don't need laws to, to outlaw racism. Well, that's you, you do actually need certain laws so that people don't murder other people, but um, those are general laws. It doesn't have to be racist specific, but you don't need laws to control racists because racists just... By nature of their bias, they destroy themselves. And it's an obsolete world. Nobody likes uh, biased people. The, the intelligent people know that it's best, a society is best when you have a diverse culture. And it doesn't need to be forced. It doesn't need to be uh, regulated or, or instilled into law that you must hire only Filipinos or you must uh, have training on, uh, you know, older people and younger people on how to treat them. No, the reality of it is, if people are loving and caring, they will naturally take care of other people just because they love them and they care about them. And they know that diversity is a spice of life, right? Otherwise, they just stick to their only kind of life. Uh, you know, they, they only like, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just give you an example. I'm not saying all people look like in this race are like that, but let's say you're, you're a Mexican only likes Mexican food. You're missing out on all the food from Japan, from Ethiopia, from Cuba, although it's similar in Cuba, uh, Middle Eastern food, Chinese food. If you only want that one kind of food, your, your life, you may enjoy your life, fine, great, that may be what you like, but you're missing out on great flavoring and other experiences from other cultures. And so, and I'm not saying all Mexicans are like that. I'm just giving that an example. It could be a Filipino. I'm Filip half Filipino. Sorry. Could be a Filipino only likes Filipino food. How's that? How's that? So that people don't get all mad about racism and oh, you're being a, uh, you're being a, a, a insensitive. No, I'm being sensitive to everybody. And the reality of it is that love your culture, be proud of your culture, promote your culture. But respect all other cultures because reality is it's boring to just be part of your own culture. You have to kind of, you have to be open to have a more interesting life, you know. And that, that again is up to you because I believe in freedom. No one should tell you how to live your life. If you do like one kind of food, fine. That's for you. But, you, but honestly, I'm just saying you're missing out on potential things that you might really love more than your own food. But by being, being exclusive... You are, you are blocking out all those other potentials that you could achieve. And this brings up another part of this topic about black swans and why, why market, markets are manipulated. You have to keep in mind that we have a power hungry culture where there are, uh, there are very wealthy and powerful people in control of the mechanisms of how economic works, 
how economics works, how uh, uh, the the country works, state statism works, statecraft, meaning the how how the state finances itself, and they enjoy being those power hungry positions because they're for, quite frankly they're narcissists. They're only about themselves. They think the world result revolves around them. They don't have caring for other people, and so a lot of their policies, if you don't. If you're a voter and you don't think about what those people are implementing from their perspective, you're gonna vote for things that are gonna really hurt you, okay? And so, a lot of people have voted for people just because they're good showmen. They sound good, they can, they're charming, they smile, they're like, hey, you know, hey. They're confident because they're arrogant narcissists, right? And everybody likes confidence. They wanna know that their leaders are confident, right? Because you're gonna represent uh, us in our country. Honestly, though, if you realize it, the United States is different from all other countries in that our Constitution makes us the government. And so we, the people, need to be confident. And, and this is kind of taking a, a political turn, but we, the people, are the government. We must be confident. We must seek our best interest. And in doing so, we will vote appropriately. We'll vote people in who are actually more humble. Yeah, we do kind of want semi-confident people who won't bend under pressure. They know what needs to be done, they do it right, but they need to do things that are in the best interest of the people. And those really hardcore narcissists are not those people, and you'll be able to recognize them because they really have to have the finest things in life. Everything is fine. And a lot of people look at Donald Trump as a narcissist because he built his brand name off of his own name. He, he has the finest things. But if you think about what he did by running for president, he was a multi-billionaire. Why did he have to run for president? Everybody loved him. He was at the peak of his career. But he actually submitted himself to ridicule and hatred by running for president. And that was a good sign to everybody that he was actually not a politician. He was a statesman. He was seeking the best interests for love of his country and for love of its people. And, and a lot of people misconstrued what he was doing and misunderstood what he was doing. But if you look at politicians like Gavin Newsom and Nancy Pelosi, they became wealthy through politics. They shouldn't have become wealthy through politics. Donald Trump didn't become wealthy through politics. He became wealthy on his own efforts and his own business and, and building that name on his own. And then he went into politics. He was already wealthy. And so he donated a lot of his salary. He, he, a lot of his uh, things were going to charities. The, the, the politicians that became wealthy through, pol through politics, they're eating at fine dining, living in the best mansions, while their districts are falling into squalor and they keep talking about raising taxes. And all of a sudden, like take Gavin Newsom for instance, in California we all, all of a sudden have a 75 or $78 billion dollar uh, surplus, or is it billion or million? I think it's million dollar. So I don't want to give him more credit than he did. Million dollar surplus, even though California has had unending drought, unending crisis with fires and earthquakes and all kinds of problems with infrastructure, and they were claiming we don't have money, so we have to raise taxes. All of a sudden, we have a budget surplus. No, I, I believe that Gavin Newsom realizes he's under the noose. He's the noose, some right? He's gonna hang. The people want him recalled, and so he's using that as. Uh, that miracle surplus, which should right away tell you, if they have that money there, where was it? Why were they claiming we're in fiscal problems in California, budgetary problems, and then all of a sudden they have a budget uh, uh, surplus? These people are corrupt. These politicians are corrupt when they make themselves wealthy through po po politics. Now, that may seem like it's unrelated to what I'm talking about. It's not. Politicians who do that manipulate markets. It becomes a not a free market capitalist society. It becomes a crony capitalist society where cronyism, uh, where you make deals with your buddies and your buddies get rich and you get rich, but everybody else is excluded from participating. Okay, and communists love to use this as an excuse for why capitalism shouldn't exist, and so they try to use that as an excuse to pass more draconian laws, which in the end favor these corrupt politicians because they want to, uh, they do things that make it sound like it's good for you where they raise the minimum wage, but all that does is it devalues your currency because companies don't pay the higher cost, consumers do. And if a company pays a higher cost, they pass that cost on through their 
final product so that the consumer buys the final product and then pays the company back. So in the end, consumer ends up paying all costs at the end of the day. And so everything is set up, it's manipulated to favor the interests of the bad guys. It's not freely moving. Things are not freely moving. And you can see that with how the corporations that favor the current government that is like that operate. You can see that Facebook limits the kind of speech that's being uh, created in content because it doesn't support their agenda. The politicians do not censure Facebook for it because it supports their agenda. And, it, and your, what you're saying is against what their agenda is. Okay, so you, you have to realize everything is manipulated. Markets get manipulated where they can use printed money to buy up assets to make those assets look good. They can also use that printed money to buy uh, derivatives that can crash other assets that make their agenda look bad. So everything is manipulated to be exclusive. And you see it with real estate. It's exclusive already. Wealthy people are afraid, so they go into real estate because they know that's one of the few things that preserves wealth. And now common people cannot even buy their own houses because the prices have skyrocketed. And so here is an unforeseen thing that's coming as a result of the manipulation. I hear a lot of talk about inflation, but inflation is happening on a micro level. It's not happening on a macro level. And what I mean by that is it appears that it's happening on a macro level. It appears that it's happening all over the place. But it's not. There are things that you can buy that are much cheaper than they were before. There are only specific handfuls of things that are skyrocketing. And those things are not included in what the Federal Reserve publishes as the CPI or the Consumer Price Index that has a basket of goods that's supposed to measure inflation. The things that you and I buy normally just to survive, they're not really going up that fast because those things are not part of what wealthy people are buying or what the Federal Reserve is buying to make things look normal and to provide what's called price stability. And the overall reality of situ the situation is the economy is bad. And so prices are really supposed to be dropping because people cannot participate in the economy the way they should be. Everything is an illusion. Everyone appears to be wealthier than they are because they are they're in debt in order to do it. They haven't bought that stuff with money they actually earned. Most of it is financed. They're borrowing money from banks so that they can buy those things. Okay, and then the Federal Reserve uses printed money to support those kinds of assets that they're borrowing money to buy things in so that the banks can stay in business and it supports them because the banks were about to fail in 2008. So the Fed is supporting the business of the banks. Okay, and everything else that's related to how you need to survive is usually crashing or it's too expensive. So what's happening is, you, can you get a job? Are you able to get a job, right? You can if you're more open to learning new things. You may not be able to get a job in your specific industry if you've lost it and it's been eradicated. And especially during the coronavirus where it shut, they shut down the economy and allowed many smaller businesses to go out of business and many big businesses to stay in business because those big businesses, again, are supportive of the government agendas. This is fascism. This is a manipulated economy. This is creating ex exclusivity, meaning if you're not in with us, with our crowd, you will be excluded. And you're also seeing that with the virus, the way they want everyone to get uh, vaccinated. And if you don't have your proof of vaccination, you still have to wear a mask. You're excluded from normal life. You're excluded. They exclude you in every way. Okay, so don't be excluded and don't get caught by these unforeseen situations. You need to prepare for unforeseen situations. So currently the narrative is, the story is that there's inflation everywhere. And I've been benefiting from that. But I am also shorting things because I know that the narrative is inflation. But the reality of it is that I experienced in 2008 that the narrative was inflation also. I made good money off of gold going up. But then in 2008, we had what was known as a capitulation because the reality of the economy was that we're in a depression. They were calling it a great recession. But in my economic books, 
it is two or three consecutive quarters of recession that determine a depression, okay? We've been in a consecutive recession for consecutive months of recession for more than two or three months. We're actually in a great depression, greater than the last one. And the illusion is trying to prevent us from the big crash. But you have to prepare for the big crash. And you have to study what happened in the Great Depression, okay, so that in the 1930s, so that you know what, what led up to it. The, the Roaring Twenties, right, led up to the Great Depression that came after. And that was prolonged by FDR because FDR was attempting the policies that they're doing today, but he didn't understand, he, he was his first time doing it, right? The Democrats of today are continuing the FDR policies but they're doing it on a much larger scale because they have derivatives and other means of technology to prolong the illusion that we are all okay. But the reality of the situation, as many people know, is that we're not okay. The great thing about this illusion is that if you understand this illusion, you can thrive in it. You can participate in it by acting the way the bad guys do. You can be sneaky as a serpent but gentle as a dove. In other words, you can you can participate in their manipulation while at the same time preparing for the consequences that are going to come from pretending to be healthy when you're really not. In the long term, your health, your your overall health will determine what happens, not the short-term stuff. The short-term stuff is just an illusion, it's just a band-aid, okay? I mean, if you're diabetic and you're taking diabetic medications, uh, they can, they're like a band-aid, but the, re the reality is the long-term ramifications or consequences of having diabetes are not good. You know, they, you don't heal well. You, your, your eyesight goes away. You tend to develop Alzheimer's disease. All these things are related to having diabetes. And you can keep diabetes in a, within a certain range with these medications, but they do not cure you. The best way to cure it is to change your overall diet and the way you're behaving. But most people don't want to do it. They don't have the discipline. And because people don't have the discipline, they continue to have diabetes and over time it takes them over. And I see that same health with our economy. People don't have discipline and so the same thing's going to happen in our economy. It's going to be a, a black swan like we haven't seen before. But there will be unicorns in the meantime. Alright, if you like this content, it's your first time here, hit the subscribe, hit the subscribe button and the like button. Hit that bell notification button so that you can be notified every time that I make a video because I don't do it regularly and you want to be able to see when I post something. And when you hit that like button, it hits, it moves me up in the algorithm uh, program so that they know that people like my information, my content, and they make it available to everybody, to more people so that they can discover it through searches and, and uh, you know, on YouTube and on the platform for content, right? And so... Make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the all button, and then most importantly, share this with people you believe can benefit from the information that I provide and who can also enjoy the content that I provide. Just a side note, I am not a financial advisor, so anything you decide to do based upon what I've talked about here is your decision. I haven't given any basic recommendations in here, but still, the overall general ideas that I give here are just uh, entertainment, and as an urge to get you to kind of get out there, start educating yourself about what's going on so that you can make better decisions, both financially and, well, not just financially, in all decisions in your life, to protect your families, yourselves, your friends, your neighbors, and then extending beyond that if you want to take care of other people. And so, with that, I hope you all are doing well. I hope you're all healthy, continuing to be healthy. Uh, I hope you are achieving great wealth in this, finding good work if you've been unemployed. I hope things are turning around for you if you've had a negative experience during this coronavirus pandemic uh, and the shutdowns. And uh, other than that, God bless you. And until next time, thank you for supporting me. Oh, that's right. If you support me, I do have donation links and affiliate links in the description below. Thank you for hanging out this long. Take care. Best of luck and prosperity to you. God bless.